Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this is a quick demonstration of how you get just a simple building. In fact, let's 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 model something extremely extremely small, uh, just to demonstrate what this does in Design Passive House. So first up, I'm gonna open SketchUp. I'm not gonna show you how to install the software or do anything like that because, to be honest. It comes with instructions and uh, this is just a demo so we don't want to be going into too much detail and um, well just to give you an idea of the process this is super super easy so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw with a rectangle I'm not gonna show you the commands again because um, obviously uh, this is all part of the course, but I just want to show you how easy this stuff is. Like, I've had guys come to the office and do this with me and just take it up in an instant. And, and it's super, super easy. Um, I'm going to draw a simple box and I'm just going to put one window in it. Cyclops, okay. I'm going to move it off the ground. And uh, I'm going to open the Passface plugin, which sometimes can take quite a bit of time. <coughs> has improved. <coughs> but when you have a big file and you're reopening the plugin, sometimes that can take quite a bit of time. So here we go. Here's the plugin open. And all the sub menus and your shortcuts and all that kind of thing, they'll all open in SketchUp is, as well. Um, so, first thing we want to do is just set the climate. To Ireland, hey! Da -da. And of course, this menu is just full of tab after tab, similar to the PHPP. Let's go Dublin, it's a bit crack. Um, I'm not going to go through it all of it right now, but if you can take it for granted, it has probably two thirds to a half of the capabilities of PHPP. There are some assumptions that it has. And the result that you get in Design Passive is not perfect until you go into the spreadsheet. But as you'll see in a minute, it gets very easy to design with and make decisions with. Now, once it's open, you get this toolbar here. Pretty fancy. And what we want to do is go to the window button. And then we want to select our window. Oops. Come on. Ta-da! So, uh... That's all it takes to make a window in Design Passive House. And uh, if I just control and Z to undo that, if I had another window here, uh, and I made two windows, you can also use this button here to uh, turn them off. The ones and zeros for installation and shading and all that kind of thing. So easy, so easy. Okay, so here's our little how Shane. Next thing we want to do is tell the program what everything is. So you can get deep into this and have custom specifications for different geo values and all. Right now, I'm just going to say it's a wall and I'm going to leave it on the default spec. Get this one and we say it's a roof. And then we do need some TFA in this. So let's say we've got walls that are, I don't know, half a meter thick. And then of course you will have internal walls and all the rules of TFA and all that kind of thing. We're not getting into that now. So instead I'm just going to make this treated floor area. This uh, is going to be a floor slab. And then I'm going to make a group of the whole thing. Beautiful, isn't it? Now. What we can then do, I have this plugin that I really love called Placemaker. And before I go into that, let's go. In, uh, do, 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 do. There's a. In model info and SketchUp, there's an opportunity to add your location. And you get this big map like Google Maps. And sure, why not place the house here? For the crack, let's go. Import. 
And that'll bring in not only the mapping from Google Maps, but also the satellite terrain, which is not that accurate, for further purposes of what we're doing here. Um, probably just fine. I use it for getting surrounding hills. You know, like, it's not that accurate. It doesn't take into account everything. But it's, it's enough for shading. So let's say we were going to put our little Cyclops building in here. Um, what we want is the effect of all the buildings and trees that surround it. So in this one click program, well, tree, one, two, tree. We get all the buildings. Woohoo! And it's an inexpensive program. It's not that dear. I can't remember how much it costs. So it didn't have that much impact on my life. Now, let's move our little building anywhere we want. And when you have the group selected, you can press the run button. And you have to have the group selected to press the run button because otherwise it will run the whole entire model. And you will sit there for days if your computer survives it. Has it done it already? Yes, it has. So this little building, because it's so small and has such poor area to volume ratio and all that kind of thing, is 27.4 kilowatt hours. Even though it's half a story high and all the rest of it, small buildings are harder to make the standard when they get this small. So we all know that, but that doesn't matter. Now, I could export it to the PHPP now, which is uh, maybe a 10 step effort. Um, or, what I can show you is really cool, we can optimize the design, or unoptimize it, let's see. Let's see what would happen if we made this window a lot smaller, which was so hard to do. I lost my 20s to the shade and sheet, lads, and I can tell you this is an absolute dream to work in. So let's go. Oh, it's done. So right away you can see the effects of your design changes. Actually, bear with me. Right there, 36.8. I'm move my video, it wasn't in a convenient location. So yeah, that 36.8 is basically the space heat demand for this envelope. Now, there are some limitations. Cooling and overheating are not yet integrated in schedule. But what you'll see in a second is very easy to export to SketchUp and within our course there's a lot of tips and tricks for how to export only parts of the simulation on top of your pre-built PHPPs with everything filled out so that you don't have to redo anything in the PHPP. Now very quickly just to sum up this what I'm gonna do is just open the tools Excel spreadsheet I'm going to open PHPP 10.4 is the current version. That's the other thing in the course, actually. We're still working on 9.6 in the course, but the reason being there's not that much difference between the two PHPPs and also that we're waiting for the next version of Design Passive House when that comes out to do the update. So you have a blank PHPP or you could have a filled out one and just do geometry only, but I'm not going to go into that today. Then we just go import into PHPP. And before we do that, I've missed a step. What we want to do from here is go export from PHPP. And there's a little PPP file. I'll just leave it untitled. That uh, is the format for interchange between the two softwares. So we just click our PHPP. We say import data entries, go to the desktop, find that PPP file, go open and press finish. And I know we don't have a lot of data in this. It's broken. Why is it broken? Okay, so we've got our TFA in areas. We've got all the different parts of the envelope, all fiddled out. Um, in ground it won't fill out. Climate may be broken. Yes it is. So 
There's a reasonable amount of cleanup that you have to do once you've got... I'm just guessing that number, by the way. Uh, there's a reasonable amount of cleanup, but a lot of the hard work is done. As in, filling out areas for every surface of the building. Um, still have to fill out the radiation balance, but that's more of a copy and paste. You can get it to do all your glazing types and frame types, but we're not going into that much detail. It'll do all your windows, and of course when you have thousands of these, which you normally have in big buildings, that's a lot easier. So that's what I can sum up in 5-10 minutes about Design PH and how it works. I um, hope that gets you excited, because for me it has saved an invaluable amount of time. Alright, thanks guys.